who was primarily in your ICP? Obviously, your B two B. Do you do B two C as well? Just tell me a little about you know who you can service in terms of who uses your data most effectively. Sure. So we are pure B two B. So essentially, our like we target companies who have who are B two B and who have a sales or marketing motion established. Right. When I say established, companies that are generally over ten employees that have got their first sales or marketing hire. And started the process of reaching out because then they start seeing the real problem, which is out of all these thousands of people out there, right? Whom do I reach out to today versus yeah. next week versus two months later, right? Nobody knows that, and and they, and that's where the guesswork starts. So yeah, any B two B company that has a sales and marketing mission established, we also focus on a few uh, areas where where we have you know seen better success right now. For example, we look at enterprise software companies professional services companies, uh, sales, marketing, HR, tech companies. So there are a few areas where we most of our customers lie today. That's great. You're clearly solving the pain of, like you said, who should I be calling right now today? You know, who's ready to buy right now? And, and it's around this account-based selling, account-based marketing, ABM buzzword that's out there. So can you just uh, speak to how you align with the account-based marketing, account-based you know, strategy of selling and marketing? Sure. Yeah. Essentially, account-based experience is the new buzzword right now, right? So account-based marketing led the trend. And now we're talking about account-based selling, account-based everything, right? Account-based. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the whole premise of account-based everything is that, you know, every company needs to know who are those active accounts that have a chance of engaging with your with your team the best, right? Of all mm-hmm. the ICP out there, you know, ICP definition is um, the traditional way of defining ICP was you have, every sales rep has a territory, has a geography, a size of industry and a size of company and industry, right? And you go and attack your ICP. But today's ICP is different, right? What, AB, what, what ABX tells us is ICP should be defined more from a buyer's lens than from your own lens, right? And what buyers are out there looking for software like yours? What buyers may have the need to buy something like your software or your, your services in the next few months? So how we help uh, define this motion is like we are we are the data layer, right? We, we are like the oil that powers ABM platforms, ABS platforms, etc. We do have our own workflows too, but we consider ourselves like a producer of this data. And what we have built uh, very well, uh, Dan, today is uh, I want to talk about a few pieces of intent that we, we have in-house, right? So one yep. is technographics intent is something that we have built entirely in-house where not only do we understand what technologies companies use today, but we also use that information to predict when their contracts come up for renewal. Uh, we understand adoption churn metrics of companies using various technologies and the confidence scores of that calculations, right? That's great. I mean, that's a game changer, right? For companies out there uh, that are looking to target those technologies. So can you speak to that a little bit more? Because I think that's, uh, like I said, a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the way the way it works is let's, let's take an example, right? So say, let's say Samsung as a company uses Salesforce as a product, and we track that. Along with Salesforce, we track 200 other products Samsung uses, right? So now, if you are a company that sells CRM software, knowing that Samsung uses Salesforce and knowing that their contract renewal is coming up in the next two months will really help you think about your messaging, right? If I'm a competitor of Salesforce, then show a display ad, or I would have a nurture campaign or a sales outreach that talks about the specific use case of Samsung, why they need to move away from Salesforce to us, and target them much better. So this is one use case where you know competitive intel is one big use case of technographics. Dan, the other use case is complementary uh, techno- technographic information. For example, today we live in a connected world, right? We live in a world of APIs, and every buying decision is not made in silos, but made in conjunction with you know what you have. So if you sell a service or a product, most likely you're going to service a technology a company has already. Or as a product, you're going to integrate with the technology a company has already, right? You're, you're not going to exist as a standalone software. In that no, not, not today, at least. <laughs> okay. So knowing what they use and positioning yourself, uh, saying that, hey, we have a single click integration with your software, or uh, we have, uh, you know, we provide services on top of your software really helps you target the market better. So technographics is one of our, one of the signals that we're very, very strong at. We have a few other intense signals too that we capture along the technology. 